for the computer one I certain amount of time it computer station I like it I like it we're getting there I'm happy y'all are making my Friday that much more happy or perfect I'm gonna keep going on my tile doing now I do see where Amy said the computer radiography kind of stores it and it actually does when you go to lab or when you go to bone what, what side are you bone, you're lbj right doing okay so when you go to bone clinic what kind of image receptors do you use in bone clinic outpatient over at lbj the um the okay for the outpatient um mm -hmm. but depending on like one side is um the two rooms for the outpatient. So one of them, they uh, it's called direct radiography. Of the right side. Mm -hmm. One of them, they do the um, computer radiography system. So, so what's the difference between them? Uh, so for direct radiography, it's like uh, like um, what we should do is right. Because um. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. My heart is singing right now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, this, this streak is just going beautifully. I can't ask for anything better. So the two differences between direct radiography and computed radiography is the material that is being used to capture the image. This is the different types of material that is being used to capture the image. Now, when I say capture the image. What do I mean by that, Isbeti? How do I create this latent image? What is a latent image and how is it created? A latent image is invisible before it hits the image receptor. So it just it hits the image receptor, but it's not there. Um, the way I understand it is like it um, goes to the image uh, receptor and then if you have the cassette, you'll take it out and it'll run it through. But if you have the I don't know. Actually, the photons and it's transferred directly to the computer. He said the word photons. Thank you, his baby. Do you see where we're going with this? In the CR, it's the type of material that is taking into uh, into effect how the photons are received onto the image receptor. Beautiful, because. Again, like Amy said and Duwin said, that in the CR, the energy is stored until we can do what, Javier, with that CR cassette? I want to electronically bring the image over to the, uh, work, the workstation. And what piece of equipment do we have to have in order to transfer the imaging plate, the latent image is stored on the imaging plate to the monitor, Javier. Don't leave me hanging. What is that called? Does, do you know what that is called that you feed the image receptor into? Well, the bucky. Uh... Well, the bucky is what holds it. Now, we're going to talk about the magical bucky later. But well, what is that? I'll, and I'll go ahead and, and ask General. What is that equipment called? Isn't it called a reader? It is called a CR reader for computed radiography reader. It is going to transfer the stored photon energy from the screen inside of the CR image receptor or CR cassette or imaging plate, whatever you choose to call it. It is going to transfer that stored energy into monitor um, where in direct radiography we don't have that piece of equipment we don't need that piece of equipment that is one less step from taking the image and manifesting the image make sense in CR you have an added step you take the image you pull out the cassette you put it into the CR reader, you wait, you hear the sounds of the machine rollers, you know that there's some magic happening and we're gonna explore all that magic, I promise you. Not this chapter, but we will. And then after that, voila, it's on the monitor. Perfect. 
And once it's on the monitor, Jolie, what do we call that image? I'm sorry, we have a question. Yes. Once we get a latent image and it transfer onto the monitor, what do we call that image? Um, that's the latent image. M. The mm -hmm. remnant? Not the, the, the image. We have two types of image, latent and? Um, latent and digital. It is a digital image. It is going to be digital image, but we call that the manifested image. So the invisible image is stored. The manifested image is presented. Okay? And that's not going to change from CR to DR. What we're going to learn, all of the photon energy is going to be stored temporarily until it is digitized and becomes a manifested image. I'll say that again. All of the photon energy is going to be stored and then it will be revealed as a manifested image. So photon energies have to be somewhere along the line digitized, converted into a binism so that we're able to see it on a manifested image. So we went from x-rays to a manifested image, but there is so much more that is happening, right? And you got to explore that. Yes? John, John, tell me about brightness levels and why do I get so excited about brightness levels? How do they vary from one brightness, from high brightness to low brightness? And in between? Uh, well, based on, let's see, based on whatever IR you have, um, it's going to have a matrix which has individual pixels, and each individual pixel has sensors that are given a different numeric value, and each numeric, numeric value is based on the brightness, or is, a brightness level is associated with those uh, numeric values. And so it goes to each area of the tissue or each part of the body, and it reads how much is transmitted or what's not transmitted, and it assigns that numeric value and it's based, that's how it bases the brightness on it, and each one has its own bit depth, so it goes a little bit. Woo! You went into all of it, didn't you? You sure right. did, John, and no, you did. You just opened up that box, and I love it. You right. are talking a lot about brightness levels determine a value, okay? A value has to be assigned to manifest a brightness level. Perfect. But how do we get that numerical value in the first place? I'm going to go to Wani. You are next on my tile. It's like the, the Brady Bunch. It's just like I'm just going from tile to tile. I love it. How do we get... Like how do you how get do the we get? How do we get... How does the computer going to assign a numerical value from a photon, from remnant energy. Like increasing the KVP? Yeah, we would alter it if we increase the KVP, but how do we assign a value from remnant energy? Think about it. It's a little difficult, mm -hmm. and I know, Wani. I'm going to see if Sharon can help you out. I'm going to put you all on a team. Sharon, is your next one my... my screen here. Luke, stand by. <laughs> Think about the remnant energy. What is remnant energy, Sharon? Uh, it's the it's a one radiation from the patient. Right, so I'm going to go with Sharon on this one, Wani, real, real quick. So it is the radiation that is exiting the patient and entering the image receptor. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Good. Wani, what is the value of the remnant radiation, is it is 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 it as high as the primary radiation? 
Yes. Mm, you may want to go back and no. look. How much is it? It's, it's a small percentage. So if we have 100% photons in this primary bead. Well, How much radiation is reaching the image receptor just, in percentage-wise? It tells you right in your book. Go ahead, Luke. Help her out. Coming back to you, Juan. Like, but I'm going to get Luke right now. I can't remember the exact percentage of it, but I remember it was... I think in straight, like, five to ten Count my percent. fingers. Count my, there we go. Count my fingers. Five, five. percent. Right. Five, approximately five percent. So we're thinking about all of this primary beam to only five percent of what was the original value before those photons interacted with matter. That is in remnant radiation. So if we know what is the, you thank you, Luke. Wani, I'm back to you. One more question. What is the unit measure of K uh, photons? I almost gave you the answer. <laughs> what is the unit measure of a photon? Not P. Thank you very much. So this unit of measure of energy, photons, is given in KeV. Remember I said... Energy is never destroyed or created. It is only what, Marisela? It is only what? I'm sorry, what was the question? I said, so energy... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So, it's okay. So, energy is energy never is created ne nor destroyed. It is only... Back to Einstein. It's almost like an Einstein. Change. Converted. Converted. Changing energy. Convert. We're, we're converting it. So KEV is going to be in, absorbed into the image receptor. It is now, this image receptor is now holding energy. But it must be converted. Because ultimately, the manifested image, Maricela, is made of what kind of language? Zero one, zero one, zero 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 one, zero one, zero one, zero 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 one. What kind of language is that, Maricela? I'm not sure, Ms. Laura. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Binary, digital. It's speaking digital language. So we're going to eventually go from AEV to K A binary language. Zero one, zero one, zero 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 one. So all of what we speak and all of what we see that is digitally captured from our pictures, when we go back and we take these pictures, I don't want to show you. When we go back and we start taking pictures, it's not print that we see. It is going to be rows and columns of pixels that are going to be assigning a brightness level to give you an image. I know this is a universe, isn't it? It is such a universe. It's like, so if I go back and I look at something like this, well, not my that, but if I go back and I look at something, my daughter and my son and my, and my pug, and I go back and I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, that's a picture. But it really is just rows and columns of binary numbers. It truly is. Truly, truly. Because we can go back and we can take this image and alter it. Any image that we can alter, the color, the brightness, the zoom it, shrink it, guess what? It's digital. It's all digital. And x-ray, ladies and gentlemen, is no different. Got it? I know, right? You just weren't ready for all of this on this Friday. I know you weren't, but it is so there. And our image receptors are the gateway to do that. So we never aim our x-ray tube unless we have an image receptor. Because if we don't have an image receptor, then we're not falling within our scope and producing a quality image. Make sense? Yes? Perfect. 
Uh, Naomi, tell me what you learned about direct radiography. We explored a little bit of CR. Tell me about direct. Direct is nice because you're not doing it. with this that the outpatient LBJ right Dean said that they have it there so basically it's a direct conversion right so the photon somehow are uploaded to the system and you see the pixels it. it's, it's so magical it's so magical so much coming. Um, but I'll learn a little more about it let's see so mm -hmm. it uses an array of solid state detectors like it could be made of silicone or amorphous selenium yes so and so like, yeah, it ends up on the digital screen and super easy for us to see. Yes. And so that is the material. Because if you go back and look up amorphous selenium mm -hmm. and you go back and you look up amorphous silicon, you're going to see and find those types of materials on the periodic table. So we're not done with the periodic table just yet. We are still going to incorporate the table. You might as well learn the periodic no, table. Great job, Naomi. On that, we are having an image. You're cutting off just a little bit, Ruth. I can't make it out just a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, I can hear you, but it's cutting in and out just a little bit. We'll come back to you. It's still probably just cutting in and just a little bit out, but let's go ahead and move to Pamela. We'll come back to you, Ruth. Maybe if you uh, unmute and mute a little bit, it'll happen. Pamela, tell me what you learned about direct radiography. Um, there's um, two forms. Direct and direct. I'm sorry, what? And direct and direct. Which, oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you. You guys are, oh, amazing. So amazing. They're in digital. You have, no, not digital, because it's all digital. It's all digital. This is just how you capture the image. If you capture it in CR, if you capture it in direct, indirectly or directly, your manifested image is the same. You can't tell if you captured it on a CR machine or, or, or on a... DR, receive image receptor. You can't tell. Once you have a digital image, you have a digital image. Make sense? You are not able to tell if it was CR created. So DR has two sections, indirect and direct capture. Direct is a little bit more efficient because it doesn't have an extra step where we're going to bring in light. Daniel. Share with me what you learned about uh, pixels. Uh, pixels is almost like the uh, resolution of the image. What? You said resolution. Oh, my God. Spatial resolution is just as high and important as photon energy. I mean, it is a beast of a topic. Spatial resolution. We've seen that word before, haven't we? John, have we seen spatial resolution before? Have we talked about spatial resolutions? Maybe have mentioned it in a bullet, maybe, when we talked about the actual focal spot. I'm sorry, the effective focal spot. Or the filament size, filament size. I'll go back to filament size. I mean, if you're talking about filament size, I know there's two different sizes, mm -hmm. and depending on what size IR, what size cassette you're exposing, one's going to have a higher resolution than the other. Which one? Which filament size is going to have a higher spatial resolution? Larger one? The smaller one. Remember, because we want the smaller, and it was difficult, it's been a long time, 
So we're talking about the larger one is going to produce more elect uh, more electrons, boil off more electrons, more photons, and so on and so forth. But when we're choosing the small one, we're usually choosing a small objective, whether it's a finger, whether it's a nose, whether it's a hand. And why do we want to choose the smaller filament? Because we want to see better spatial resolution or detail of the object because the object, it's so small. Right, the larger the object, you want to see detail, but it's not going to be so important as a small objective. So the filament is when we last talked about spatial resolution. Spatial resolution is going to be highly incorporated into the device that converts photon energy into light or electrical energy for a manifested image. Now let's take into consideration Aurora. How do you, remember we talked about the phones? Remember how we talked about phones and you know, what do you have, an iPhone or Samsung? I don't want to put your personal business out there, but if you're okay with sharing it, what kind of phone do you have? I have a Samsung. Okay, so what makes the Samsung, What? why do you choose Samsung? I don't know, that's what my husband bought. <laughs> <laughs> it's convenience. Okay, good. So when you think about direct radiography and computed radiography, it's kind of like comparing Samsung and Apple. Right? Things right. are just being performed differently. Manufacturers are creating same type of outcome. Can you text on your Samsung? Yes. Can you take photos on your Samsung? Yes. Can you browse the internet on your Samsung? Yes, I can. And you have the availability to some apps that are very common to both Apple and Samsung, but you're able to have some special benefits of Samsung, right? Yeah. Right. Good. And why I'm saying this, CR and DR are based off of manufacturers. What kind of manufacturers, I don't know, have you ever paid attention? Aurora, I'm going to ask you one more question. Have you ever paid attention to the type of machine that you use when you go into clinic? What is the um, name brand? I have mainly seen at LBJ, uh, the GE. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Rocky. So GE is a manufacturer of x-ray equipment. Asias, have you seen anything else besides GE? Asias, do you hear me? Uh, no. No, you haven't seen it other than GE? Okay. It's, I, it's a Philips. It's Beautiful. Philips. Philips is another. All right. News alert. We are going to be converting starting now. And I think they're starting with Baytown. We have a clinic out in Baytown. And I think El Franco is on, is slated. Every machine in ACS is going to be upgraded. We're all going to direct radiography. Just like film and just like your book only shared a small paragraph of film, it is becoming obsolete. Guess what? So is CR. CR is becoming obsolete. Okay? So as we start to move forward and transcend into direct radiography, we are all going to convert over to Philips, which is going to create a... a, 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 uh, a Synchronous the ability of moving. I know sometime next year. I think it's going to be somewhere around. Thank you, Julie. I think it's going to be somewhere around maybe March or April or or um, uh, May. But we're going to have to see how it impacts us. Okay, so we're going to have a better ability to manipulate the equipment consistently. What other manufacturers are out there? Siemens. Siemens is out there. Fuji. Your CR reader is. Fuji. So we are starting to change an Apple, Samsung, Motorola, same concepts. Make sense? It's all about what machine can provide us what we need 
and can we learn to adapt to it? Just Lee, I want to go back to the matrix. What did you learn about a matrix? And what does it have to do with pixels? It's the image composed of numeric data with, with columns and rows. Beautiful. Columns and rows. Absolutely. Absolutely. Son, do you know, and this might be a little bit out of, but do you know how many value can be assigned to one pixel? Oh, um, I don't show about the the value, like matrix value. Look at me. One. One. Absolutely. Only one. Only one, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, and Stephanie. Hmm. Let's see. Just tell me what you learned about what you explored. I knew that you had said you learned a lot. So give me a quick synopsis. I think I've already asked all the questions that I wanted, but if you could tell me what maybe I have not asked. Um, I'm not sure I was, maybe everybody said everything, but um, I kind of went into chapter 10 a little bit. Um, it was just talking about the PSP play and then um, Oh, you said oh, yeah. a magical word, photostimulable phosphorus, photostimulable phosphorus. Thank you, Miss Stephanie. That, in a nutshell, is going to be, I don't know, a week's worth of learning in itself. Photostimulable phosphorus is a type of material that illuminates when x-rays stimulate it, and it will produce light. Photo, light. Photo, L-I-G-H-T, will represent light. Light. So when you see the word photo, photo, it is light conversion because x-rays can be converted into light and then eventually light into electrical energy. Didn't we start with electrons? Where did we start with electrons? X-ray two. Where did we see electrons, Julisha? We saw them in the x-ray tube. We saw them in x-ray tube when we did what to them? Boil them off, didn't we? And what is that called again, that process? Thermatic emission? Woohoo! We did. We are going back to electrons, people. We are going from an electron to a photon back to an electric electron carrying that energy. It's like a big old circle. Okay? And then we'll get to zero one zero one zero 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 one. Okay? All right, so do you guys have any questions for me before we get into these next few slides? No? Okay. I was trying to figure out um, how a display on a monitor can be altered. I put, uh, uh, the use of dynamic range, pre-process, and, and uh, post-process. I was going to make sure I was correct on that one. You said the words that... Why dynamic range? And, oh, my God, you just said all this terminology, people. This is just terminology. Post-processing is how we manipulate the, the manifested image. It is how you go back to your images and you apply those little filters. You're like, ooh, I got acne. Let me take that off. Ooh, I got a wrinkle right here. Let me take that off. It is a way of altering what you have stored electronically and manipulate it. That is all post-processing does, right? When the people have, when you go out to the, the, the clinics and they go back and they post-collimate, that's post-processing. They're just taking the manifested image and they're altering. They're altering the, 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 the pixels on that matrix, on that monitor. Make sense? Good, perfect. So we're going to get to that. We're going to answer some of those questions. I just want to go over these, oh, and I'm gonna. You're gonna lose me on the screen, but I just want to make sure that we go over these a little bit of uh, slides. We're not gonna to spend too too much time on the slides. So, okay. So.
So I left you off here. Can everyone see me? Ms. Lab. Matt, no? Ruth is having um, connection issues. Yes, we can see oh, it. Hold on. Okay, hold on one second. So, let me let her. Is she trying to get in to the. I think she keeps trying. I'm not sure if it took her out, but I think she's just having a like, problem seeing or hearing. Okay. All right. Let me just check to make sure she's not waiting on me. Okay. Okay, can everyone see me? I mean, see my digital, my screen? Yes, I can't see. Okay. All right. So yes. when we... When we think about, this was your homework assignment, and we're going to spend a little bit of time, but I really want to get here. When we think about a digital image receptor, not film, this is not film, this is not the universe of film, this is the digital image receptor. We can respond what basically means an array of x-ray ex exposures. What this means, this x-ray exposure, is remnant radiation only. Not primary beam, because primary beam is entering the patient. To make an image, we're using what results from interaction. So a wide dynamic range is how we refer to the ability of the digital image receptors to capture all of the attenuation differences. What does that mean, attenuation differences? Anyone? What does attenuation like mean? Like how, different, like how different tissues attenuate the beam differently? Right. So we know that attenuation is going to reduce the beam altogether, right? Whether it's going to be fully lost in photoelectric absorption or it's going to be Compton scattering. We know that, right? And attenuation means a loss of energy, whether it's a total loss or some loss. But once that energy reaches the image receptor, we know that that energy is going to be deposited onto the image receptor. A wide dynamic range image receptor says it is so sensitive. I'll say this again. It is so sensitive that it picks up the smallest amounts of energy. A digital image receptor is so sensitive that it's going to pick up the smallest amount of energy, therefore creating a, a, a very line of brightness levels. It is going to be such a vast difference of brightness levels. They're not going to be all transmission, and we know that they're not going to be all absorption. We're going to have all of those Compton interactions exposed to the sensitivity of an image receptor, and it's going to give us a various amount of brightness levels. Any questions there? So, here it goes, basically what I just said. Anatomic areas, whether it's tissue dense, whether it's tissue thick, whether it's high atomic number, all of it is going to absorb or attenuate or transmit radiation differently. So because we have this digital image receptor is so sensitive, it is going to pick up the different attenuations, energies of the remnant beam. Make sense? It is going to provide energy to fill in that latent image. And then, again, we can go back, depending on what KVP we use, or mass, technical factors, whether we use not enough, or whether we use way too much technical factors. The diagnostic image or the digital image, I'm sorry, the digital image has the ability to be manipulated. And even if it's overexposed or underexposed, it is going to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It is going to be adjusted to make an appearance, a manifested appearance of diagnostic quality. So we're, when we start to explore the production of images, how images are created, we're going to talk eventually about histogram analysis and how images are adjusted 
to maintain a quality appearance. We will also learn when we can tell something is underexposed and when we can tell something is overexposed, but the computer applications that is going to convert this photon energy is going to maintain a quality uh, presentation of the manifested image. Are there any questions there? Okay, so we know brightness values. What is brightness values again, um, Daniel? Uh, digital images are composed of numeric data data that mm -hmm. can easily mm -hmm. uh, manipulated, be manipulated by a computer. And if I wanted to say brightness values and color, what colors would I choose? There are three colors that we have been talking about, Marisela. What are they? I'm going to give you a hint on one, black and white. And what's the third one? Black, gray, and white. Beautiful. Black, gray, and white. So all of those, those values, we talk about the word value. Value is a number. It, it, it is a number that's associated with um, importance or it's associated with uh, measurement or it's associated with whatever it is. Value is a number. Brightness, brightness is white brightness is a Ink class low, uh, low brightness is black high brightness is white mm, various brightness yes. is going to be gray yes. so brightness is a color values is a number so when you look at these two you're saying number is going to be, be displayed as a brightness but what is giving us our value Anyone? Pixel. It's going to be a sign. The pixel doesn't. This is, the pixel will only display. Where are these values to assign brightness coming from? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Binary. I see where you're going with this, Daniel, but I want to go back before we even get to binary. I don't know how far back we're going, but the beam gets attenuated. Uh huh. Like, and where the level what, of attenuation will determine the brightness I, value. Right. So, thank you, Naomi. So, what the beam is getting attenuated? What is it losing? Energy photon. Okay. So, how do we express energy of a photon? Hmm. What are those three little letters again? How, how is a photon expressed in K energy? KEV. That's our value. So whatever the 50 keV landed onto the image receptor, 10 keV landed onto the image receptor, zero keV landed onto the image receptor, 100 keV landed onto the image receptor. All of those photon energies are the values that will eventually be assigned a brightness. Make sense? Yes? So transmission, does transmission have a high energy or a low energy? A high energy? Beautiful, because it didn't lose a lot of its energy on its, on its path to the image receptor. What happens to a photon that is absorbed? What kind of numerical value will it be assigned? Mm -hmm. The number? Zero. Be zero. Zero. So then it's going to be assigned a high number. So we, I mean, a low number, zero is going to be assigned a low number. What kind of brightness is that going to be? White. Perfect. So when we look at this image, we see a lot of black and white, right? But what we're also seeing is the fact that we see rows and columns of these little boxes. It is these little boxes that are making this image, correct? 
this image can be anything it chooses to be in this field of view or the parameters of the collimation. Make sense? So we have these rows and columns of what is eventually going to be known as a matrix. A pixel is each little box inside of the matrix. It's like saying, how many pixels do you have in your family matrix? <laughs> how many members belong to your family matrix? Make sense? So what matrix here or image matrix or image receptor matrix is rows and columns of pixels, a picture element pixel. Now, this image tells us a lot. We could go back and count all of these pixels and it'll tell us what size matrix it is because matrix will come like filament sizes, large and small. Large and small or medium is just going to be depending on how many rows and pixels there are. But let's take a look at the brightness levels. Is Bevy, what brightness level is this that I'm pointing at? It's uh, high because it penetrated. This? So, okay, it penetration, but I'm talking brightness level. So, remember, is this high brightness or low brightness? Low brightness. Low brightness. It was a high value, right? Yeah. It was a high value. More energy was deposited here because the appearance gives us low brightness. A lot of energy was deposited here. Well, what about right here, Amy? What happened in these pixels? Um, it's high brightness. And what kind of numerical value was provided there? I'm just thinking about the one, the zero one that zero. you said. It's just zero. Now, zero one is going to be binary talk. We're going to get it there. It's just zero. So if our KVP was 100, you could probably say the value here was about 100 and right here was zero. John in? I'm sorry, uh -huh. I'm sorry, just really, mm -hmm. low brightness and values, um, it's just going to be an inverse relationship. So when there's low brightness, there's high value? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Very good, Estetti. Very, very, very good. So now we can go back and we see Mickey Mouse or whatever this is. Right, and we go back and we look at it. Jonathan, can you tell me what, what type of, what, what was used to create, if we were talking the x-ray world, what was used in order to make this image in relevance to tissue, to construction or atomic number? What was used to, it's not the fact that we look at this image and we say, oh, yeah, you know, they just put out a little layout of, of, of this face and the x-rays did their thing. What do you see, Jonan? What material would this have been? And relevant Are you talking to about, what like, his eye? The eye tissue? Yeah. Eye, yeah. Okay or this eye, or this mouth, or this. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not following with, with it's the okay. question. It's okay, and I know it's difficult. So if I were to get... Uh -huh. Do you mean like bones? Like, yeah, why so would be a bone? This would have been, right, this would have been bone. This oh, would have been okay. bone. This would have been, or metal, right? And this would have been air. So it gives you an outline. It's not a square where you have a cutout of this cat and the x-rays did. It's the opposite, isn't it? The cut, this is being transmitted and this is being absorbed. So when you go back and you relatively take this into account into x-rays, this material absorbed to give this appearance. Does that make sense? So in your mind, you can think, how was this created? It wasn't a cutout. The square was cut out of thick, thick or atomic material and this was voided. Does that make sense? In order to give you this type of appearance. 
Am I kind of get, making sense of how to look at images? Because when you look at it like this, we know where photoelectric effect took place. We know where transmission took place, right? We know what was on the outside, and we know what stopped x-rays from reaching the image receptor. So when you start to think into consideration, oh, well, here we have pixels. They're in columns and rows, columns and rows. Rows go horizontally, columns go vertically. We have pixels that are going to create, come together and create our X-ray or photon attenuations. I will pause right there for any questions. So everyone can see pixels, correct? When you look at this, and we're going to get into it on Monday, that we're going to look at these matrix and these pixels. And what we're really going to explore is that every pixel can only, can only be, um, can only be one value. So when we look at an image like this, the pixels go away, but they don't really, they just shrink so much that we're not able to see them. Okay. I know. It's a universe. It's it's an, it's like, whoo, that's crazy. I know it's a lot going on. So with that being said, I want to make sure that um, we understand there is a lot still to learn. Okay? So homework assignments are due. Make sure you turn them in if you haven't done so already. Um, we're going to get into pixels and matrix we're going to get into binary numbers. This chapter also explores static imaging versus dynamic imaging. Okay? And then we still have a lot more fun for next semester, so don't... Okay? I'm not exhausting all the fun right now. Any questions? Ms. Laura, I have our test right now for Monday. Is that correct? For this test? Yes. No? That's what I thought, too. Yeah, it's now we're going to have to move it. I thought, is that on the revised one? Yeah, it's on the test for Monday. Yes. Uh-uh. We're not going to be able to finish. We might be able to finish on Monday. But if anything... Okay, so your final exam... Let me look at my calendar. Your final exam. So what do I have down for the rest of the semester after your test? Reviewing your test on the yeah, following Monday and then review and then on that Wednesday and Friday. Mm -hmm. You Let's have our test written down as Monday. Your test. You have our test written down as okay, Monday and then we have the break. And then it, there's nothing written down anymore until finals week. Okay. So let's go ahead and have your exam on the 30th. So that way we can review it on that Wednesday and review or what? Okay. Well, let me ask this. Cause I know my, I know, I know my faculty, they like to give tests over a long break. Do you already have a test on the 30th? No, ma'am. We don't. Okay. I like we have that. a bunch of tests on the second, I think. Presentation. Yeah. Monday. We have a test on the second and the uh, fourth. Okay, I'm taking the 30th, and so we'll do the 30th. We should be able to finish on Monday, and then um, that'll give you some time to ask your questions and do whatever you need to over that holiday. Remember, you're off on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday. And so on the um, 30th, we'll do your exam. We'll be able to review it on the 2nd, and then we'll be able to review for the comprehensive final on the 4th before you start your makeup week. Then that goes into makeup week. So you'll have a whole week to study. If you need to do any type of um, scheduling for tutoring, we always encourage that you reach out to your faculty. And then your finals week are going to start on the 14th. So we'll move this exam until uh, November 30th. Okay? Ms. Lara? Yeah, yeah, we're not finished. Do you know if we're going to do the exam in person or online for the finals? Are you still working on it? 
we're working on getting a an ex, a new software, and so unless it's uh, it should be launched sometime soon. So unless we're able to get that launched and uh, piloted with success, meaning there's not a lot of complications to it, then that's what we're going to choose to do. And that software, where it, it saves more integrity because I believe it shuts down all of your other devices around you. I know. It's crazy. Digital <laughs> technology. It's, it's supposed to shut down all of your other devices. I don't know what, what that means or how it works, but I can't wait to test it. So that's our new platform that we're moving into. It's called Exam Soft. Ms. Lara? Yes, Ms. So did yes. you say that we don't have class on Wednesday or we do have class on Wednesday? No, you're we don't. It's a holiday. Oh, okay. Okay. And Tuesday we go to clinics, right? Yes, you do. It's a normal day. But I don't believe you go to lab. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fung, is no, no. Did, you, did you read your email? Yeah, yeah. So he You're said, not convincing me right now. You're not convincing me right now. <laughs> There's no lab. The week after that, we have lab. Okay. Miss Laura. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, oh, so the test that we're going to have is just about chapter 8. Chapter right? 8. So yeah, we're not gonna focus. We're not, I'm sorry. We're not gonna focus on chapter ten right now. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Laura. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ms. your comprehensive final will consist of all of the chapters we have learned this semester. So we'll kind of bring everything back into one. Right. It has been quite an adventure, ladies and gentlemen. We have learned a lot. Right. From MA to Mass to KVP, and now to brightness levels. We are taking that journey. So um, you guys have a happy Friday. We'll continue on on Monday. Make sure you submit your homework assignment. It is due today. Okay? Thank you. Do you have any questions before I leave? Yes. Go ahead, John. I, did have one. I just had one question about, about lecture stuff. Um, so, like, when you, when you call me, is that... Um, is that shrinking down the matrix field as well too, and tightening in those pickles even more, or is it just cutting cutting off the field? It's just cutting off the field. Okay. It depends. It, it depends on what type of matrix devices you have, but I don't want to really get into that too too much okay. because collimation does two things. It, could, it depending on the type of matrix device that you have, it'll shrink it um, to make a better spatial resolution, or it'll eliminate scatter to also reduce or increase quality imaging or spatial resolution. So with that being said, your field of view is your collimation mm -hmm. barrier. And that's kind of where I want you to be right now. So field of view, FOV, field of view, is your collimated barrier or parameter because that's what's being manifested. Okay. Okay? Yes? Happy Friday, one people. More, oh, one, one more thing. Do we need to go over anything? Uh, with, with um, in terms of film, like in chapter eight, there's some couple sections about film, like the intensity really things like that. Right. It was just a small paragraph. That? It was very dense. Um, what they, what the film world used, and what is important here is intensifying screens. You're going to see the words intensifying screens again. Um, intensifying screens were associated with light formation, photo, mm -hmm. photo, and so. Um, I want you to keep in mind, we still use that type of technology in CR and in fluoroscopy, but not as much as we did in radio and in, in film, in the film world, okay? So all I really need you to focus on is film is that they use image intensifier screens and it um, x-rays, the image intensifier screens were very sensitive to light. So that's why we had to work in dark rooms. This is why we still <laughs> choose to work in the dark because of the the restrictions that we had to light at the beginning with film. Okay. okay, but that's all. I don't need you to go into image intensifying screens, any types of elements that is not important. It is not on your exam. It's just basically staying where we're coming from. Got it. Okay? Okay. Any other questions? Like, yes. <laughs> One more question. Sure. This is not about PRE. It's about pathology. Okay. So by Monday, you want us to know about the body parts? Or you mentioned something about 
pop quiz? No, go into the modules. Go into the modules, and I, if, if I pop is going to be, do you know your images? Do you know a sagittal image versus a coronal image versus an axial image? How do you view these images? Oh, okay. Makes sense? All right. I mean, yeah. in sagittal and coronal, you're still viewing them like radiographs. But axial images, you're viewing, you're viewing them how, Lani? Inferior to superior. Just like this. Like if I were to put my head back. Perfect. Good. All right. Any other Thank questions? You You're welcome. Okay. Then, happy Friday, people. <laughs> Bye, guys.